Well, good evening and welcome to the Matt Rowe Institute of Worship Leaderology. My name is Matt Rowe, the founder of the Institute, and I am so glad to uh, be offering this lesson for you this evening on how to plan morning prayer right to from the 1979 Book of Common Prayer of the Church, the Episcopal Church in the United States of America. And so, without further ado, let us begin. I need to set up my book stand here. I hope this doesn't get too shaky for you. Okay. Well, I'm so, so pleased that you have decided to matriculate here at the Institute of Worship Leaderology. I hope that your studies will always serve you well in your Christian life. This class is being recorded in the evening and uh, the next day after this class is recorded will be Tuesday in the third week of Easter. And after we go through some basic principles of planning for morning prayer, then we shall look at a service uh, for the morning of Tuesday in the third week of Easter that I have laid out for you that you could actually uh, use in your daily devotions. Why would you want to use the Book of Common Prayer in your daily devotions? Well, for one thing, you're used to using it. You use it on Sundays when we gather for corporate worship, and there is so much more uh, than the little bit that we use in corporate worship that is there for you. And among those things are the daily office, our daily work of offering our prayers uh, to the living God. And the it left me. Well, I don't exactly know where I cut off. I was talking about why you would use the prayer book in your personal devotions. And the reason is, is we use it on Sunday in our corporate worship. So it makes sense that we would want to use it in our personal devotions. And there are so many resources in the prayer book for us. And the daily office is one of those resources. The daily office is our daily work of offering our prayers to the Lord. And you can use the daily office with a little bit of training, and that's what we are going to do in this session. The Book of Common Prayer uh, came about in the year 1549 uh, as part of the English Reformation. The chief architect of the Book of Common Prayer was Thomas Cranmer, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, during the reign of King Henry VIII. And the first prayer book came into use in the church in England in, on the Feast of Pentecost in 1549. That book only lasted three years. There were some revisions made to make the book even more reformed in nature. And that second book came out in 1552. And that uh, history has an impact on our uh, how we practice morning prayer, at least how I practice morning prayer, because I am someone who uh, is mindful of history, and so that history uh, has an influence on how I practice morning prayer. Now, when you plan a service, there are uh, rubrics in the prayer book, and I try to be very mindful of the rubrics and, and follow them. Um, and you can be guided by some, some books that will help you. This one, I'm going to flip the camera and see how, how that works for a moment. There we are. Hello there. This book is called, <laughs> it's backwards, but it really is called A Commentary on the American Prayer Book. And you can read about the source material of everything that's in the prayer book by consulting the commentary on the American Prayer Book. And it was, uh, uh, we, have copy in, we have a copy in our parish library, and I have a copy in my um, 
uh, in my collection. This is one of those books that I don't uh, lend out because it's just one of those books that I need to keep for reference sake. So, so we want to look at how to plan the service of morning prayer. What do we need? Well, we need a Bible. And I like my revised English Bible, and it's also the most compact in my collection, except for my digital Bible that's on my Amazon Kindle. And so this one fits nicely if I'm traveling. And then we need a prayer book. And this is my book of common prayer. Um, I think I've had this one since about 2005. And it's one of those that has not only the prayer book in it, but it also has the hymnal. So it keeps me from juggling books during a service. So there's, a, there's some steps to planning a service from the prayer book. And it'll take you some time to get used to it. But once you get into the flow of it, it'll become second nature and you won't have to think about it quite so much but you'll need to know where first of all you'll take the lessons and the lessons come from the uh, daily office lectionary which is back here somewhere there it is so the daily office lectionary and it's behind the Sunday lectionary. So it begins on page right there, daily office lectionary. Begins on page 934. There's some uh, opening information about it. Then it's laid out week by week through the church year from Advent all the way through the end of the church year. And in this particular service that we are planning, we are in the third week of Easter and tomorrow will be Tuesday and it is year two in the daily office you decide if it's year one or year two by um, how much the majority of the year that begins with with Advent uh, so this Advent began in 2019 but most of the year we will live in 2020 and even though 2020 feels very odd, it is an even number, and so it's, day, it's year two in the daily office. So you'll need that information to plan um, which are the psalms and the readings that you will do. Now, this uh, handout is posted as a comment in our uh, Facebook event, and it's also posted on the Emmanuel Episcopal Church website. You go to emmanuel-sa.org. And then scroll over to programs and then underneath that is Christian education and on the Christian education page in the right column there's a column of video uh, instruction and they, this handout is there for you but also it's in your Facebook comments so um, should hopefully you have this and you can follow along so here's our guide and uh, one thing I want to note is the suggestions about posture are for when you're doing the service with a group. If you're just by yourself or in an informal setting, you get to follow your own conscience about posture suggestions, whether you stand, sit, kneel, stand on your head, whatever it is that makes you comfortable. When you're by yourself, you can get away with that. So I kind of have scoped out morning prayer in four sections. We have the entrance rite, the invitatory, and the psalter, and then, the lessons, and then the prayers, and then the concluding rite. And you've probably already picked up that that's five steps, not four. We didn't do a whole lot of math in seminary. So the entrance rite. And in this table, you'll see the element of the service, where it is in the prayer book, the suggested posture, whether it's required or optional, and some notes about that. So on page 75 in the prayer book begins a, a three pages of opening sentences from scripture. And they are laid out by season. Um, and then there's some that are just for general use on page 78. Now you can pick one or two of those to say before you begin, but notice it's optional. All of this section really is optional. Uh, and, and particularly when you're, when you're by yourself. 
Now, the next thing that happens in morning prayer is this confession of sin. Uh, and if you are familiar with the Eucharist, it's the same prayer. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. And then afterwards, you, you would say that the absolution by just saying, Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to tell you, this is where my historical uh, bent comes in. I typically omit the c confession of sin at morning prayer. The reason is that it was not part of the first prayer book of 1549. It only came into the 1552 book after Thomas Cranmer went to visit with some of his friends in Geneva who had a rather lower view of human nature than Anglicans do. And they convinced him that all of the services needed a, a confession of sin. But I usually omit it because of, I'm mindful of that bit of history. And also I think, how much trouble can you get into between waking up and saying your prayers in the morning? So then we come to the invitatory and the Psalter. And we have the elements of that, the prayer book page, posture, whether it's required, and some notes about it. And the invitatory starts on page 80. And um, that's the opening words are called the presses, um, or also you could call it the versicle, the opening versicle. And it's that, Lord, open our lips. And then right afterwards, we say the Gloria Patri, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And we always add Alleluia to that, except during the season of Lent. Then, if you want, you can, if you want to be fancy, you can have an antiphon. And we'll look at those. I've planned those in the service that I have for you. Then comes one of the three, there's three choices for the invitatory psalm, uh, which is the venite, or the jubilate, or the pascha nostrum, which we say during Easter season. Um, and uh, I'll show you, we'll have the Pascha Nostrum, Pascha Nostrum in, in the service for tomorrow because this is Easter season. But please, for the love of all that is holy, don't call it the Venite and the Jubilate. It's the Venite and the Jubilate. After those invitatory psalms, then come the psalms that are appointed for each day. And we found those in the daily office lectionary. And when we get to the service, you'll see that it's Psalm 26 and 28 tomorrow morning. You can also um, read through the whole Psalter in a month. And when we look at the service, I'll show you how that can be done. Then after the Psalter, we say the Gloria Patri again. And if you were fancy and did that antiphon, then you do an antiphon at the end uh, of your Psalter. Then we come to the lessons, and we have one or two lessons are typical for morning prayer, and if you want to add a third, you can add all three of the readings appointed for the day, but I prefer to have uh, two readings for uh, morning prayer or evening prayer. So you'll find that first lesson in the lectionary, and you will read it from uh, your Bible. Uh, they make a um, daily office book that has the readings already printed in it. It's rather expensive, and um, I think it's good to learn our way around our Bible, and so I like to use my Bible for the readings from uh, Scripture. Uh -huh. Then we, um, you, you have your readings, and you can introduce them if you want, or if you're by yourself, you can just read them. No one's going to be, there's no liturgical police that are going to come and check, check on how you're doing. Then after the first reading will be a canticle. And there's some canticles that begin on page 85. But notice you can also have a period of silence. Um, and there's a table for knowing which canticles are suggested for each day of the week. And I used to follow that table slavishly. But over the years, I just listen to the lesson and I, and I kind of get a sense of which canticle might f just fit my, uh, where I am spiritually after reading that lesson. Then we have the second lesson. Same thing applies as the first. You don't need to have a big fancy uh, introduction when you're by yourself. 
then another canticle or another period of silence. Then if you want to have the third lesson, you may. And then comes the Apostles' Creed, which is required at least once each day when we do the office. So if you do it in the morning, you don't have to do it in the evening. Um, then we come to the prayers. And the first prayer is the Lord's Prayer. You can use the contemporary or the traditional. And when you're by yourself, you don't really need to say the greeting that goes before the Lord's Prayer. Um, you, sometimes I'll say, let us pray, and then I'll say the, the, the Lord's Prayer. But you don't need to do the, the Lord be with you and also with you because, you know, you're by yourself. So that seems a little schizophrenic there. So, uh, so you say the Lord's Prayer and pray it. Um, it's so familiar, uh, but it's really, it's really helpful to really pray and, and kind of linger over those words. Then after the Lord's Prayer comes uh, either suffrages A or suffrages B um, at your discretion. And then a series of collects. Typically, I use three. Um, the collect of the day, and tomorrow's collect of the day will be for the third Sunday of Easter, because tomorrow's not a feast day other than that. And then there's a list of colics in your prayer book um, that are listed here, and I usually pick one of those. And then there's three colics for mission on page 100 and 101. And you can add other colics from the prayer book that might be appropriate to the occasion. Maybe there's just something that's especially um, on your heart or on your mind and those other prayers are located in the prayer book beginning on page 809 and you can see there is a whole list there's prayers for the world for the church for national life prayers for the social order for the natural order for family and personal life there are um, prayers for someone who's having a birthday, for those who are traveling, prayers for guidance. There's just wonderful prayers, a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Um, there's these other prayers. And, um, these are really good for Sundays too, actually, these before worship and after worship and before and after receiving communion. And there's even grace at meals. If you're ever at a gathering and someone says, would you please say grace? You can memorize these four short little prayers and grab one out of your memory bank and say it and you'll, everyone will be so impressed. Then there are some thanksgivings. There's thanksgivings for the church, for national life, for the social order, for the natural order, for family and personal life. There's a whole collection of prayers that might fit your particular situation in life uh, wherever you are as you pray the office that day. And then comes authorized intercessions and thanksgiving. And this is where you use your own words and, and talk to God about what's on your mind and what's on your heart. If you have the parish prayer list, you might remember the names of the folk who are on the parish prayer list. This is the, this is the time where you um, just, just talk to the Lord and maybe even spend some time listening for what the Lord has to say to you. And if you like to sing, then here is a place where an office hymn can go, and uh, I sometimes throw that in, even when I'm by myself. Then the concluding rite. We pray the general thanksgiving or the prayer of St. Chrysostom at the end of the service. And uh, when you pray the general thanksgiving, you will have heard those words before. It, there's a treasure of the English language, I think. And then you either say the dismissal, like, let us bless the Lord, thanks be to God, or one of the closing sentences, like the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. So that's a little walk through this uh, graph. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the service as I have planned it for tomorrow morning, Tuesday in the third week of Easter. And you'll see how these things um, become incarnate or at least in in on page form uh, here as, as a service that's been outlined and then they would get incarnated as you would say the office uh, in the morning so we have a sample outline for morning prayer and the appointed psalms and lessons are for Tuesday 
in the third week of Easter, year two, and that's on page 961. Um, where the daily office lectionary gets complicated is after the season of Easter, um, we get into the season after Pentecost, and the, the weeks are called proper. Proper, um, like here's proper four, and you'll see it says the week of the Sunday closest to June 1st. So you have to know where you are on the calendar to know which proper that we're using. And actually, when we get to Pentecost this year, um, we will, I think we will be using proper four. And that, that was just quite by accident that I did that. So after Pentecost comes on May 31st, and so that's the Sunday closest to June 1st. So we'll start with proper four when we get to after Pentecost um, this year. So back to our service outline. So I might begin with an opening sentence that is uh, appropriate for Easter season. And it's this one, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then you'll notice that I skipped the confession. And actually there's another reason yeah, Easter season is such a season of joy and celebration and we have done our penance during Lent and so Easter season is is joyful and celebratory whereas Lent is more penitential and um, and meditative and so that's another reason why I would skip the confession tomorrow and um, not re not I wouldn't resume the confession until after um, the, the day of Pentecost now, then we come to the invitatory and Psalter, and we have the presses or the versicle. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. And then we have the Gloria Patri. And then I got fancy, so I put in an antiphon. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him, alleluia. And then there's that invitatory. Um, and it's not an invitatory psalm because all of this comes from the New Testament. Um, this is all from St. Paul and it is a celebration of what Christ has done for us, and so it's a particularly appropriate for Easter. Then after the invitatory, we have the Psalms for the day. We'll have Psalm 26. Now, if you are living in a monastery, the way that a lot of uh, monasteries or um, convents read the Psalms is you see that asterisk that marks the half verse, they would pause for a good little bit there and then at the end of the verse they wouldn't pause at all before jumping into the next verse so it would sound something like this give judgment for me O lord for i have lived with integrity i have trusted in the lord and have not faltered test me O lord and try me examine my heart and my mind for your love is before my eyes and if you you can try that on your own um it, it it's a different kind of rhythm because that stop in the middle feels kind of odd but i've been in monasteries where that's how they do it and i've been at clergy conference where someone who's been to a monastery tries to get us to do the psalms that way and um there's always this kind of when do we when do we come back in and it's a little bit confusing but anyway so you'll see that you've got psalms 26 and psalm 28 tomorrow and then at the end of the psalms you say the gloria patri we do a lot of that in the daily office and then because i got fancy i end the psalter with the, with the, the antiphon then comes our lessons and tomorrow we have the 19th chapter of exodus and then you could have a moment of silence or you i picked canticle 13 for after that lesson and you can find those paid those canticles on page 144 is the um, suggested canticles for each day and i believe that's the one suggested for tuesday then the next reading is from paul's letter to the colossians and then canticle 18 for the second canticle then the apostles creed and then the Lord's Prayer. And um, you can say either the contemporary or the traditional version. And then the suffrages come after the Lord's Prayer. And I chose suffrages B for tomorrow. And suffrages B is a good choice if you skip the confession. 
because there's a petition there about Lord keep us from all sin today have mercy on us Lord have mercy so there's that just in case you know you, you're covered there so then we would say the collect of the day which is the collect from the, the Sunday just passed and that's on page 224 that the collects in the prayer book start about page 210 then we have the colic for peace, which is my choice for usually on Tuesday. Then you have your own prayers. Or, um, yes, the, you, your prayers and then a prayer for mission. If you want to sing an office hymn, the place to do that. And then the conclusion, I picked the general Thanksgiving for tomorrow. And get focused. There we go. That's the rest of the general Thanksgiving. When I'm by myself, I don't usually say the prayer of St. Chrysostom because it talks about when two or three are gathered. So if I'm by myself, although I am gathered with the whole church. So maybe there's a something to think about there. And then uh, I didn't use the let us bless the Lord dismissal. I used a concluding sentence there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that is a walk through... Uh, for morning prayer for tomorrow and you can use that as a template for your practice of it and let's see i'm gonna set my camera down i hope i don't make you sick by bouncing here around too much <laughs> okay there we go so i hope that that was uh, something that was helpful for you. And please know uh, I'm always around and available if you wanna uh, work on just feeling more confident with planning the daily office on your own. Um, you're, uh, I would love to help you. Uh, I, think, I, I think that, um, well, I think George Herbert said it best. He described prayer as the church's banquet. And so feast um, on, on the, the privilege of being able to offer our prayers to God who, who loves us and who um, washed us in the blood of the Lamb and made us a kingdom of priests uh, to serve him here on earth and to serve him in perfect peace and, and, and union with him in his heavenly kingdom. Uh, but until that day, we carry on and we keep on praying and we keep on hoping and we keep on loving and we keep on worshiping, we keep on singing and until the day that he brings us uh, to our home. Again, thank you so much for being here uh, for this lesson and please uh, don't hesitate to call on me if I can help you in your planning. And remember uh, the handout that I went through tonight, it's in the comments uh, of this event and it's also on our website and you go to our website emmanuel-sa.org and then look under programs and then Christian education and then there's a, on the right side of the Christian education page there's some um, audio video lessons and the handout is there so thank you all and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.